Hi guys and warm welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a, an oil change on the DSX 900 and those of you who've been following my channel are probably wondering why I'm going to be doing an oil change seeing as uh, just a week or so ago it went in for its thousand uh, kilometer service and the main reason I'm doing it is the climate in this region where I live. Now you can see today it's a pretty overcast day it's only about 23 degrees at the moment which is quite cool for this time of year but the last few days we've been getting up into the mid 30s centigrade and often as soon as we get to june and onwards we can hit 42 43 so in the manual for the dsx 900 the recommendation is different oil grades and i'll put a, a link to the oil grade list in this video just after this point and you can take a look guys and see the different grades but it recommends that if you're going over 30 degrees and up to 50 degrees centigrade to use a 20 w50 grade oil when it had its service it had a 50 grade oil in which is the high operating temperature when it's hot but they put a 5 w50 uh, grade oil in and i wanted uh, something a bit more viscous i should say so i'm going to try it see if it makes any difference to the gear changing because what i find on this bike when i uh, change gears when it's cool the bike hasn't fully warmed up but it's warm enough to ride away the gear change is very smooth and the, there's no definitive click between gear changes so it's just something i want to try and put uh, a superior oil in the bike you never quite know what the main dealer puts in although it says on the invoice that it's 5w50 so i've taken that as red but i'm going to try this particular oil so we've got a power one the 2050 weight uh, four stroke uh, motorcycle oil power sustain and we're going to see what happens with this in the bike and see if the gear changes any better now there's four liters in this tub and when the bike is totally empty you're looking at roughly three liters to fill it they reckon when it's warm and there's a bit of oil in the filter etc you're looking at about 2.8 liters so it's not going to use all of this the instructions are on the back which you can read about the oil if you want but we all know how to change uh, our oil in our bike so there's not much uh, point in reading that but it's uh, a power rated uh, oil so we'll give it a we'll give it a go and uh, see how we get on so what you're going to need to change the oil in your bike all of you'll know this of course is a suitable container that's going to hold more than the uh, oil that's in the bike and you're going to want something suitable to kneel on i pinch one of our outside dog beds so they're not going to be too happy but i won't get it too dirty and of course you're going to need something to open the uh, the bolt on the bottom of the bike so i'm using a 40 a four or five uh, hex uh, 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 spanner and this fits okay but it seems a slight bit loose so i'll have to look in the manual to see if a four or five is the correct uh, hex screw for it uh, it will undo it and uh, i'll talk it back up to the correct torque setting later so first of all this bike's been running for only a few minutes and so enough to get the oil warm enough to get it out so i'll chat a bit while i do the oil change and uh, talk about things that have been happening within the chinese bike industry you'll notice my uh, channel is called motec revolution with a question mark and there is a revolution coming in uh, motorcycle in the motorcycle industry so i'll stick the camera on one side and we'll crack on and uh, start doing this oil change on the bike now i'm going to check the camera in a minute because i'm not sure if i'm 4k on this particular camera i'm using on the type of car that's in it might stop recording and i might have to carry on again so if it does that i'll come back to it right guys So like I said, we need to crack the, uh, the nut on the bottom, which is accessible under the uh, bash plate. And once you've suit suitably uh, loosened it off, obviously you want your container at the ready uh, to uh, get the old engine oil. And it'll be interesting to see guys on this now. On this particular bike, I've covered 1500 kilometers. It had its oil change at 980, and I re reset the uh, service interval myself, and I've told you how to do that in a previous video. So it's still another 500 kilometers, but it'd be interesting to see the color of the oil and the condition of the oil after just 500 kilometers. So hopefully uh, I don't uh, drop the uh, plug and don't get covered in oil. We're good to go. And that is pretty clean, guys. That is really, really clean. So, 
nothing on there i'll just get my uh, goggles on sign of old age guys as you get older you can't see a thing without reading glasses so yeah, a tiny tiny bit of swarf on the uh, magnet tiny tiny bit uh it's not you won't see it on the camera so it's not worth showing it but it's there was a tiny tiny couple of flex hardly anything really nothing uh, major to worry about uh, so i'll put that to one side and we'll get that cleaned later and i'll just move out shot and get a, a, a rag to wipe my hands yeah so uh, some interesting uh, statistics guys uh in the motorbike industry as a whole Vosges, as I've said in previous videos, have uh, got a good foothold on the uh, mainland Europe continent and have been selling bikes in Spain for a good few years now. And if you go on their webpage, uh, which is their official Spanish webpage, you'll see that there is 21 models that they have in their lineup. And the dealership uh, dealership network throughout Spain is quite uh, comprehensive. There's uh, dealers in most towns. Uh, there's been a lot of videos popping up recently from the uk with the uh, cf moto 800 the cf moto 800 mt which is, uses the ktm 790 engine now i looked at that bike about 18 months ago basically online and then tried to find a distributor here in spain and i was really keen to buy it there, there was two models at that particular time there was the uh, sport model which had the uh, solid spoke wheels or the uh, alloy wheels i should say and there was the touring version the uh, 800 mt touring and the 800 mt touring if i remember right was i think 10,999 say and uh, the sport model was a bit cheaper just over 10,000 uh, later on maybe a year ago through different uh, advertisements and things in the popular motorcycle press the explore version came out now the explore version a few of you in the uk have got the explore version they're using it currently uh, again really really interesting bike but the problem is bike sales throughout europe and this is where the uk nothing to do with brexit is purely the uk on its on its the way it uses uh, its bikes and buys bikes but in the uk in 2023 there was a decline in motorcycle sales of about 0.2 percent it's not a lot it's it's basically break even so even on even year on year this year it's, it's looking around the same if you look at the official figures for spain and italy we're looking at plus 20 percent increase in, in motorcycle sales in 20, uh, 2023 and that was thought that that would drop in 24 to a, a lower degree but it, the sales in 2024 are looking pretty similar around 20 percent on year on year on uh if you go over to Germany, you're looking at 15%, and the rest of Europe, most of Europe has got an increase apart from the UK. Now, that may be down to the weather in the UK. It may be down to the prohibitive things that you have to do to get a license in the UK, and it's getting pretty bad all over Europe now. It's similar everywhere. Uh, so that may be a factor, but the, the thing is, people aren't buying bikes per se in the UK, maybe because of the weather, as I've said, you, you need good weather most of the time. There are all weather riders. I used to ride in the UK all weathers. But to be honest, it's much nicer to ride when you get decent weather. Maybe that's why we've got it in the continent. Now, another problem with CF Moto here in Spain, I was really keen to try one of these bikes and uh, have a look at one. The old, I live in the Morthia region, which is a fairly big region. And... Uh, I got into I got onto the CF Moto page, which is it's very convoluted, mainly selling their uh, quad bikes and uh, different things. But it's very very hard to find the right way to research CF Moto here in Spain, and I believe in the UK it's similar. Uh, eventually, I found out there was a dealer in Morthia, but it wasn't a, a dealer as we uh, perceive the dealer to be. It was an apparel shop that sells motorbike helmets and motorbike clothing. And they said that they would have one, a demonstrator in store in X amount of weeks, but they didn't actually sell bikes, but they, they sold them as an online thing. If you go on the popular app we've got here called Wallapop, which is a, a selling app, it's free to use, free to sell and all the rest of it. 
There are plenty of CF motors for sale on there, but again, all by resellers and all on online sales. So you buy it, you register it yourself. It's not registered by them. You buy it, you have to go to Traffico and do all the paperwork yourself. So that's the trouble in Spain. And another factor in Spain, the Explore model I just talked about, which is probably similar to the DSX 900 that we're looking at now on spec wise with the, the added features that it has within the bike. Here in Spain, that is 12,000 euros for the Explore model without the luggage this particular model is 8,888 so you've got a, a disparity of 3,000 euros and I believe looking at the prices in the UK although you don't have the DSX 900 at the moment in the UK the price for the models in the UK is very similar to other marks and other bikes that you can buy for a similar price and I think the sales have been lackluster worldwide and I, I know they're selling in the UK but on a, on a global scale and on a, a scale of sales it's very very small and when you consider triumph and you consider ktm a small manufacturers on a global scale and the amount of bikes they put out they've got concessionaries in all different countries triumph ktm etc but on a global scale compared to some of the big japanese uh, motorcycle manufacturers and the chinese ones now they're small fry and this is why ktm sold out to cf moto cf moto now 51 percent of ktm so in effect they own the company and this this gives them their the license now to produce bikes at a similar sort of price to other bikes in the market i.e v-strom v-strom 650 the 800 de the versus and a plethora of other bikes that are actually cheaper than the newest new cf uh, moto model so that's the basic consensus and the way things are going with the motorcycle market if cf moto i think are putting out great products i really like the look of the mt450 as a, a sort of campo countryside dirt bike if you like and a town bike uh, it's a great little bike it looks to be quality components but there's just not the network to buy them and have them serviced and have reliability a reliable mindset that you, you you get in something that is in a you know it's looked after like a chain like other bike uh, manufacturers do whereas the Vos here in spain and all over europe they have an official web page on every country it's only the uk that imports Vos via uh, moto gb i think it is and likewise cf moto go into the uk by moto gb under license and uh, uh special license to them every other country uh Vos especially have their own uh, dealership network and their own showrooms dedicated showrooms in northern spain Vosges headquarters is a huge complex all those motorcycles all those those apparel all the guys in those uh, uh, shirts and you know signed shirts etc so it looks as if we've got a roll out there guys so i'll go and get the plug and we'll put that back in and uh we'll give it a good clean What I want to check, and I, I didn't see one on here. There's no uh, copper washer, which is a bit concerning. Let's just take a look under the bike. See if it's stuck to the top. Ah, yeah, okay. So the uh, the washer. I'm going to reuse the washer. I know it's uh, it's ideal to replace it, but the washer, looking at it, is an aluminium washer. It doesn't look to be overly compressed, and it's only been in there for 500k, so we'll clean this off and get it back in. Good job I spotted that. It may have dropped in the oil, and we uh, would have had a few drips coming out. So we'll go back in with that. You guys know the procedure anyway. You've all changed your oil and your filters, but uh, it's more of an experiment and a bit of a, a, bit of a waffle as I uh, change it. I've noticed a few guys on uh, Facebook forums with the DX uh, model at the moment have uh, gone down the route of trying to install uh, BMW 850 bash plate underneath and a uh, guy called Mark who's on, you may, you may have uh, seen his posts if you follow uh, the DS uh, sites on uh, Facebook, he's put a an 850 uh, bash plate on he's managed to get it on there is some modification he had to make he had to extend the uh the spaces etc to get past the uh exhaust pipe on the side so the oil's in uh we're going to take the uh, oil filler plug out and uh we'll have a look uh, now 
uh, I'll try and uh, give you a close up on the oil. It looked fairly good coming out, guys, but let's have a look in there. You can see that uh, it's not overly clean, is it? it? It's not bad. It's not jet black, but it's uh, a dark treacle. So probably uh, a good idea to uh, change the oil at this point. So I'll move this camera up a bit and I'll move it back a bit. We don't need to be too near. There's not much to see that fell in place. You can hear a lot of clattering. What I'm actually doing, guys, I'm putting some my toolbox on the uh, tripod. So I'll chuck the oil in, guys, and uh, we'll see where we are with it. Another crazy thing on the uh, Vosges 900, there's no sight uh, window on the engine. You've got a dipstick, which is more akin to uh, a car than a motorcycle. Most motorcycles have a, a window, a sight window on the side to check the oil levels. This particular model doesn't have that. So guys, uh, I jumped forward there a little bit. There's probably 2.6 litres gone in at the moment. And the camera was on the other side, so you couldn't see much. I didn't have a small enough funnel to get in there, so I've used a, an old piece of laminated plastic rolled up into a, a funnel. And uh, we'll just have a quick look at 2.6 litres. Not a great fan of uh, this type of dipstick. I much prefer a sight window on the side of the engine. Uh, it's a lot easier to read, especially when the engine's warm. You, you, you're faffing around again and re-dipping. And we're just on the maximum there without starting the engine up. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to start it up, let it circulate, let it settle again, and uh, just, just double check it, just to see where we are. Well, guys, by my estimates, that is pretty much just below the uh, full line. Just have a look on the side of the measure on the uh, on the can. Put it down on the ground, and it's just, I would say, about hundred mil under the two and a half liters. So I reckon it's took two liters, two point six liters. I reckon it's took more or less, maybe two point six five. Uh, so that's an, an idea guys if you're going to change the oil how much oil you need three liters will be sufficient And judging on that there's uh, just under one and a half liters left So guys we'll uh, start it up and let it tick over for a bit. It's, it sounded a bit quieter then I don't know I know the viscosity is going to make the engine Labor a little bit when it's colder, but obviously we're very warm at the moment uh, and the strange thing about the specification from uh, Vosges for this particular grade of oil is it uh, will actually go down to about minus five and up to 50 degrees so it's quite a a long level in oil so it will go across a wide spectrum obviously uh, there's a, a good few different spectrums in between of different oil types so uh, yeah we'll, we'll give it a quick start <laughs> Yeah, so guys, that definitely sounds a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to take it up for a test ride and uh, give you my feedback on how it goes. It's quite a strange thing, the Castrol Power 1, when you start pouring it, you think you've bought hydraulic oil because it's bright, bright red. It's blood red, uh, which is uh, quite strange. But uh, there we are. So guys, yeah, just a quick video uh, chatting about things that are going on in the market in general. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up. What I have noticed on my channel... Uh, is that out of 100% of people that are watching the channel, only 10% are actually uh, subscribed to the channel. So less than 10%, actually about 9.2%. The rest of the people who are watching these videos are not subscribed. Cost you nothing, guys, to subscribe. Just press that uh, notification bell as well. And it helps me a lot. It gives me the incentive to make these videos for you guys. So, you know, time and 
uploading the videos, pre preparing the videos, etc. It takes a bit of time, but it gives me the incentive to carry on bringing videos out to you to help you, etc., etc. But also, if you've subscribed before and you think you're subscribed, just double check uh, that you're still subscribed. There's a strange algorithm of uh, YouTube where people get unsubscribed if they don't watch your channel for a while. So maybe you haven't watched for a while and uh, you've not seen any videos. So double check that you're still subscribed. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video, guys. And again, thanks for all the support. Thanks for all the comments and uh, I'll keep updating you on any things I find out about the bike. There was a video on Facebook this morning, uh, maybe from China, I'm not sure, with an update for this particular model. It was an over-the-air update, did it via his phone. I don't know what it does, it was all in Chinese, but as soon as I find out, I'll let you know. So guys, uh, ride safe and uh, enjoy your motorcycling, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out, guys.